I think uh, it's, it, it was around 12% uh, as a matter of fact and we identified a whole series of ways you could take that out. What government suggests is over and above what, I, what we suggested by doing things with certain things with paying conditions and by government acting as a bulk buyer much more than it has it could take even more money out. We shall see. Um, I think there are a group of police forces at the top end of these cuts if you like on the 15 to 20 percent band of those cuts for them I think it will be quite a hard job and I think the only way I see it changing in the future is the form and structure of what's been called the front end the front line will have to change the, the, the sheer numbers in it and the budget 80 odd percent of the budgets in people mean that that's an inevitability I think the canon must be repaired. Uh, we do face an enormous challenge now in, in financial terms and in changing the accountability in national structures around policing. So the longer, uh, you know, as Lincoln said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. And I think the police service needs to come up with the best plan it can because whatever government's in office, given our financial circumstances, there will be change. And I think a, a if, if, if there isn't a combined sense of that plan, then the officers who, who everybody depends on to do the right job for the public, they will be dissatisfied, uncertain and anxious, and that's a bad place to be. Well, I would definitely classify this as a lively conference. Um, I think it's lively, I think it, there's, it's laced with concern. Uh, and, and there are a number of uncertainties out there and hopefully government and others will actually clarify those uncertainties about paying conditions that the officers worry about. But I also hope that on the other side of this uh, gradually the police service will come together about how it will adapt itself to the world we're in because that's what we all have to do.